Riot sent me a survey in game to fill out questions about weapons, agents, and maps, and this will take a few minutes, so why not do it, you know, for a YouTube video, right? Alright, let's jump in. This survey is focused on gathering feedback on the core gameplay of Valorant over the last patch. The Valorant Balance team uses this survey to understand how players feel about the game and track it over time. We'll be asking questions about weapons, agents and maps. The survey will take approximately 8-10 minutes to complete. If you guys don't know what changed in the patch, I did a Lotus Lab video just two days ago, I think, about the new patch. This section contains questions about Valorant weapons balance. Are there any weapons in Valorant that feel too powerful for their cost? If so, please select these weapons <laughs> below. Are they trolling with this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a zero cost, this is pretty overpowered. All right, all right. So, too powerful for the cost. Bulldog, definitely not. Classic, definitely not. Guardian, definitely not. Shorty, after the nerves that it got hit by, I don't think so. Like, I think it's it does what it does or what it should do. And the cost is still decent. Like, it's not super cheap. And it's awkward because it's 150, so it doesn't fit like every round. So I think it's okay. Phantom, I would actually buff Phantom to 2.A, uh, but that's my own opinion. So yeah, definitely not. Frenzy, no. Vandal, not really. Um, what I'm talking about, I would actually, my, my bad, I would, the other way around, I would buff Vandal to 2.8 while Phantom to 2.9 or like even 3k, but that's my own personal opinion. All right, Ghost, no. Marshall, yes. This is the gun that feels way too strong for its cost. Like that's, for me, this gun is just, guys, if we might actually have a Marshall meta very soon, but I don't think so it will happen. And until that happens, this gun will not get nerfed. It is too powerful. It is way too good. But since not many people buy it, that's the same thing that it was with Stinger. No one cared if the Stinger is too good because no one was using it in the pro team, sir. Sheriff? No. I don't. I actually feel like Sheriff is a little bit underpowered because of the 145, so you have to be very, very cautious about it. Uh, operator? I think it's fine. Stinger? Huh? Uh, why, why, does it sh why does it show 950? But they're asking for the new patch. So this is very disingenuous. Like, they 100% sent the patch, uh, sent this survey after the patch was implemented. So this should be 1.1k. So I'm not checking Stinger because... Ah, th th their data is gonna be awful now. Because people will not understand, is this the new patch or the old patch? Because they also didn't say which patch are they asking about. I assume it's the newest patch where the Stinger is nerfed, but they didn't update the the cost of the Stinger, so now people will be confused. So I'm assuming this is the already nerfed Stinger, and I'm not gonna tick a box on it. But people might, because the cost is wrong. Ares, I don't think so. Spectre, I don't think so. Odin, I don't think so. Bucky is underpowered. Judge is okay. Alright, so one gun. Are there any weapons in Valorant that feel too weak for their cost? If so, please select those weapons below. Okay, so too weak for their cost. Okay. I would say it's actually Guardian, because it doesn't fit. It's like, it's a good gun, and I think the cost is fair, but the problem is, the cost is so high that it doesn't fit anywhere. So it's a good gun that you want to use, but you don't. You only buy it if it's the last round and you don't have more cash. Because otherwise, you're just going to go for Sheriff and save it for the next round. So it's like... In my opinion, the, the price of the Guardian is okay. But it doesn't fit. So I think it does feel too weak for its cost. Um, I, I would type in Vandal, but that would require explanation, so I will not. Um... I feel like Ares definitely feels too weak nowadays. Bucky definitely feels too weak. Uh, okay. I mean, Bucky after the nerf, it's like, why on earth were you using Bucky when you have a Stinger or, and it was 950, right? Now, even with 1.1k, I would still not buy Bucky. And Bucky is just, I don't know. 
it just should be a gun. And the problem with Bucky is that you can never buy it on pistol round. So it can never be cheaper than this. Right? Like, you, you, you cannot put Bucky on 800 because then people would buy it on a pistol round and just wreck you with it. So you cannot change the price anymore. So it, that would... It, buffing Bucky would require gameplay changes or the number changes, right? So either higher damage, better spread, and so on. Now, when it comes to Ares, I just want to... If you guys didn't remember, Ares got buffed to a point where it, it was just as good as a rifle and for the same cost. But instead of reverting the buff, they just nerfed it to the ground. So it was worse than before the buff, which makes absolutely no sense. So this definitely needs a buff. Or just revert the fucking nerf and the buff. You know? So yeah, okay. You selected the weapons below. I was feeling too powerful. Oh, shit. I cannot go back. I will want to type in the marsh uh, vandal as well. Oh, okay. Unlucky. You selected the weapons below as feeling too powerful for the cost in the space below. Please briefly explain why you feel that way. Mm. The no scope accuracy feels way too accurate for the high damage output the gun presents. Combining this with the high fire rate allows you to use Marshall both long range but also close range as a semi shotgun. Like that's why how you use it, right? If someone pushes you, you go poof, 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 poof. And if you hit a guy, it's 100 damage. So it's like kind of like a Bucky, you know? Like Bucky typically will not kill with, uh, with a left click unless you just literally aim it perfectly, right? But a Marshall is only 100 credits uh, uh, um, pricier, but you can play it long range, go for one-tap headshots, but if someone pushes you, you can go for lucky body, body hits with it, you know? So I definitely think this is, this is the problem with the Marshall. I don't mind the headshots that they are killing people. I don't mind that at all. The problem is the accuracy with the no-scopes and the fire rate, you know? You selected the weapons below. I was feeling too weak for that cost and the space. Please briefly explain why you feel that way. Inconsist... Uh, hmm, no. Both in current state after the nerf, both left and right click feel that they share the same damage. Uh, no, how do I say that? Click left and right click feel that they share the same tasks range uh, limitations which makes the right click obsolete the thing is i will show you that later on um actually actually wait, wait a second I, I can actually show it in game i'll just go to the practice range i'll show you what i mean because i think it's a very interesting issue with the bucky let me show it to you what I mean with this. Because there's, there's a big problem with dealing damage with the Bucky left click and right click, right? So we get the Bucky. This is 12 meters, right? If I crouch and shoot like this, this should be almost lethal damage or even lethal damage. Here we go, all right? That's uh, something I play with Reyna. As you can see, left click from 12 meters deals lethal damage if you aim correctly, right? From 30 meters, it doesn't. But 12, it's gonna be like insane. You're able to kill a person from 12 meters. But when you right click, it only deals 100. Right? So you have, like, this ability to just deal whatever the marshal is doing. 
but you have no flexibility of the marshal. Right? So it's very similar to what you what you can do. And it's like, if you play with a Bucky, you're never peeking from this, this kind of range. So you're always limited to this kind of range. So you never want to do the right click because you're always going to go for left click. Like this. So why on earth would you ever want to be in a position to choose a Bucky over a Marshall? Unless you're literally holding only like this. Right? So that's the issue that I see. Um, that's the issue that I see with uh, with Bucky. It's just the, the, the nerf hit it so hard, you cannot use the right click and the left click separately. They share the same the same goal. Lethal range of the left click is 12 meters. which um, competes with the right click and you don't want to even peek with Bucky while the range is over 15 meters. Okay, I think I shared my thoughts well. Uh, all right, Guardian. The gun feels fair and priced accordingly, accordingly, but because of the price of other rifles, the 2250 price makes it a... Hmm... Tough buy in most rounds. You either prefer to buy Sheriff or Marshall instead, since they share similar traits but don't cost a leg. Um, so the price is limiting the usage of the gun. Nerfing the gun and making it way cheaper would probably be okay. Ares. The buff that made the gun overpowered uh no wait how do i explain that was definitely incorrect but the decision to over nerf instead of reverting the buff destroyed the gun's position because it became weaker than before the buff. Consider please just reverting its state to the pre-buff. Okay. Alright. This section contains question about Valorant's agent balance. It, I literally wanted to make a video about buffs and nerfs. I guess Riot just gave us an opportunity to do that. Are there any agents in Valorant that feel too powerful compared to the rest of the roster? If so, please select those agents below. Fate? No. Raze? No. Chamber? No. K.O.? No. Sova? No. Sage? No. Viper? No. Killjoy? No. Sky? No. Jet? No. Astra? No. Neon? No. Breach? No. Phoenix? No. Brimson? No. Cypher? No. Omen? No. Habo? <laughs> Reina? <laughs> Yoru? No. Um, are there any agents in Varn that feel too weak compared to the rest of the roster? If so, please select those agents below. Yay. I definitely think so. So, Habo. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sky. 
Silva. Those are my three. I mean, how about it's self-explanatory? I would buff Breach a little bit. Actually, we're going to type in Breach as well. I'm going to explain it in the comments. Um, because I'm assuming that I'm going to write an essay as well. Um, okay. Because I will show you something. Wait, I will show you something. Because I made a tier list here, literally before I started streaming today. I made this to make a Lotus Lab video about it. So I said, needs buff, Habo, Breach, Sova, maybe buff, Scyther, KO, Killjoy, Sky, Viper, nerf this. I don't think there's a need to be to do a nerf at all. And okay, yeah. So those are okay. And just delete the agent, you know? So it's like, um, yeah. That's what I wanted to do for today's Lotus Lab. Um, oh wait, so too powerful. Yeah, we don't need too powerful. Too weak. We're gonna check Reyna and we're gonna leave a comment to delete her. Um, okay, 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 okay. So, Breach, I want to micro buff. Harbor needs a rework. Uh, what, what else was there? Sova, yes, maybe buff. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we can type in KO as well, explain it. Uh, then we had Killjoy and Viper. Let's, okay, let's let's do everything that I wanted to do. Killjoy and Viper. Where is Killjoy? Here we go. So we're going to check mark those. And Cypher? <sighs> nah, let's leave Cypher out of it. All right. Are there any agents Valorant that you find particularly confusing or frustrating to play against? If so, please select those agents below. Confusing or frustrating to play against. Every single person on the planet who's doing this survey is going to go, Ooh. 100%. 100%. Confusing or frustrating. Um... <laughs> I would say Neon, frustrating to play against. That would be my pick, and we're going to explain it in a moment. Actually, we can delete the Reyna from here, but I, uh, check Reyna here, okay? And then we're going to write an essay. Um, okay. All right, here we go. Knuckle crack. KO. The defragment feels super inconsistent because of the range uh, AOE damage. Buffing it, buffing, buffing, buffing its AOE radius would be cool, or letting it deal maximum uh, actually that's gonna be another point would be cool to make sure the damage overall is chip damage to make sure the chip damage overall is being more consistent mm. changing the damage output to deal exactly the same damage to Killjoy ult in its entire in 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 wait the, um I don't, does it sound good in English changing the damage output to deal exactly the same damage to Killjoy ult in the entire range of the grenade would allow KO players to have a better planning phase against Killjoy. That would be my advice. No, 
AOE. Yeah, you're right. Typo. Okay. Hubble. This guy needs a rework. His issue is that every single piece of utility shares the same goal. Vision denial. If you want to listen more about what I have to say about Hubble and shit, just go type an exclamation mark compendium in Twitch chat and read the agent decks. You have a lot of explanations over here with video links. And as you can see here, Harbor is a early game vision denial an agent that has retake utility and safe planting. There's absolutely nothing else that he can do consistently. His issue is that blah, 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 the same goal, vision denial. Reworking one, one of his abilities to have a completely different role would be amazing. Also, please read this. Wait, I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send this to them. Thanks. <laughs> Killjoy. All right. Um, Killjoy. Killjoy. What I wanted to change in Killjoy's kit. I, I, I had something in my mind. Ah, I know. The utility range could be slightly increased to allow the player to have more freedom than now because it's really tough to have um to have a consistent game plan. No, wait, a flexible, a flexible game plan where you are being super limited by your own kit. Sky. Overall impact feels subjectively speaking feels low one of her utility heal is basically not used in most of the rounds which limits her viability as a initiator other initiators have full kit that enables executes buffing the old back to six orbs might be too good but Adding a fourth lettuce would probably be nice. So my point is that Sky is just... It just doesn't feel like a main initiator, you know? It's like you're always going to go for Sova or Fade or for Breach when you need to have an actual agent that will support and execute. While, while the, 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 the sky is like, oh, okay, we already have one initiator, but what, what if we have two? It's like the Hobbits meme of the breakfast. You know, it's like, you don't need it in the first place, but it's okay as a supplement. So, it's like, I feel like she's, she's just not filling a role well, you know? Viper. Snakebite, damage, nerf. 
pushes her more into the hated horse plant player, which I think limits the gameplay. Reverting the damage back to 150 plus the, the snake by damage back to 150 plus would motivate players to use the molly to check corners during an execute which would limit the amount of snake bites saved for postplant proactive gameplay is always more positive for the community rather than reactive breach um <laughs> this guy is always targeting the three nearest targets with the ultimate and yes, Sky was much better when she had the old flashes because they were more for herself. So she felt more useful for herself. Right now she's a support agent that doesn't have a third kit. You know? Like, that's that's my biggest pet peeve with Sky. Like, it's, it's okay that that Sky flash got nerfed because it's also a buff at the same time. You cannot destroy the bird and you have a higher duration of the flash. You're able to be a better support player for the team as a Sky player. The problem is that you are paying the price of not having a full kit just because you picked Sky as an initiator. So you have less utility for an execute. So you have to play, as I said, a main initiator because of the other initiators being more useful than Sky overall, right? Um, all right. I, I'm not saying anything about the Viper fuel because there's no way that they're going to change that. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not even saying feedback about that. Breach. The only issue with Breach that I have personally experienced is the stun sway. It's insanely frustrating to use your ultimate or um, fault line on a player just to get one tapped while he is fully stunned this is happening more than it should buffing the stun sway would be great at the same time i understand that the stun is a global feature for other agents. Astra, um, Astra Sky, Quell stuns. Neon, yeah, Neon. Uh, that the stun is a global feature for the other agents and it might be too powerful on those agents in comparison to breach so maybe reworking the effect to be unique for breach and leaving the other the, the standards done for the other agents would be an idea to look at so my idea is that oh and harbor right and harbor um my, my idea here is that we don't want to overall buff the stun because there's too many agents that have different type of playstyle than a breach right and if the stun is getting buffed on agents like neon for example or the ultimate or, or like the infinite range of astra then this might be too powerful right but breach is like an agent that needs to commit 
And when you're committing, you you feel you're doing proper decision making, you're stunning, you're pushing in, and then a mud and then a mutter with an aureola on his head goes one headshot, you know, with a vandal, full accuracy, nothing changed. The, the guy just was crouching and shot at you. It just feels bad. It just feels bad. That's why I'm proposing to rework the stun into a different effect that has similar approach, but it doesn't doesn't um, tie. It doesn't have a tie in with the other agents in the game. All right. Sova overall feels insanely useful as an agent. But every single piece of utility feels underpowered if you play him yourself. It's like Sova is insane, right? Sova is insane. But when you play Sova in ranked, you feel like none of your utility is good. You know, it's like on pro level, he, he's nerfed because of the pro level. But he doesn't feel good to be used as a as a uh, solo character. So it's like he still has the value for the pro players because they're going to adjust to the nerves. But when you play the game as a Sova, you always feel like, oh my god, this character is just so limited because it, it, he potentially can give so much value. Right? So uh, the things that I would like to see changed is Shock Darts... Damage buffed or AOE radius buff. Wait, damage, damage buff or AOE radius buff is needed for the arrows. Oh, wait, wait, is needed increasing the radius would also um, motivate Sova players to use the darts as utility clear, uh, as a means to clear areas of opponents' traps. Drone's duration also feels really short. Okay, I think that's it. All right. Um, Rayna. Just delete the agent. It's okay, it's okay, it's enough, it's enough, thank you. Thank you, you can stop, you can stop now. You can stop now, thank you, thank you. So, should I explain this Is an, in an essay or not? Because otherwise they're just gonna think I'm trolling, right? So we have to explain it. The agent's identity doesn't fit to a tactical FPS. Her selfish, ne selfishness, eh? selfishness, I think I wrote it correctly, makes her the best, quote unquote, best pick for solo queue, which ultimately limits the entire team and puts more pressure on other agents to perform in the uh, with the utility to compensate for the fact that Reyna has zero value out of her own kit. Um, this creates an issue 
where most of the player base doesn't really learn the game the proper way. There's a reason why she is not being picked in pro play, but is in solo queue. And that is the anti thesis of Valorant gameplay to me. All right, we got him. Like, it just really feels sad. Like, Reyna has 15% pick rate. That means that on average, every lobby has a Reyna and a half. You know? Playing against Neon frustrates me. Because I can never assume anything on the map because I can never assume any opponent's position on the map because she breaks the timings which you learn while playing the game when every agent has the same running speed. I cannot really do anything about it. I'm just complaining here. Okay. Oh my. All right. This section contains question about Valorant maps. Overall, how satisfied are you with the following maps in Valorant? Ascent? Uh, they didn't... Uh, for, uh, 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 this is ranked, right? This is ranked. Like, this, this is something that... Uh, I, I, I don't talk here about the prop play. I will only speak about the ranked experience, my friends. Okay? So, Ascent very dissatisfied split very dissatisfied pal satisfied lotus very satisfied even though like uh, i'm assuming i'm gonna be explaining this right haven very dissatisfied it's kind of it's kind of funny because lotus is more complicated than haven but i enjoy playing it in ranked more because it's just a fun map while Haven is complicated and has nothing interesting on it, so it feels just bad to play ranked. You know? Fracture, satisfied, I would say. Um, Icebox, eh, neutral. Too bad that they didn't put the old maps here. But it's like Ascent and Split are just so horrible to play on. Like, they're just so horrible. Like, they're just unbalanced. In ranked, like, on in pro play, split is slightly attackers based, and it was always that way. With the changes now, it even pushes it more a little bit forward towards the attackers. But on ranked, people have absolutely no clue what to do, right? We have played today split when people were just absolutely lost. And it's the same same situation with Ascent. It's too, the map is too simple, has too many choke points. Sorry, has only a few choke points that you can go through. So it's always easy to hold this map. Are there any maps in Valorant where attacking feels too difficult or frustrating? Y yes, thank you. I was just explaining that. If so, please select these maps up below. Ascent. Split. Those two feel like dog shit when it comes to attacking. Are there any maps in where defending feels too difficult or frustrating? If so, please select those maps below. Yes! Haven. It's the reversal of Ascent and Split. But that's not because the map is bad. That's because the player base is bad. Right? That's the issue. The maps are okay. Sorry. The maps that are not Ascent are okay. But Ascent is horribly designed. You know? All right. The map design makes it incredibly difficult to attack in ranked because of teammates' inability to learn defaulting or understanding the importance of destroying defense utility.
Map is fine. Community is horrible. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Ascent. Now, this is a... Wait, map is designed... Map design... Wait, map design is fine. Map design is terrible, which results in really bad experience with in-ranked. The low amount of entrances for the sites combined with the fact that they are all small choke points makes it incredibly difficult to attack when the players as in split have no understanding of the fundamental fundamentals of attacking widening the entrances or changing the angles to make it easier for attackers would be advised you selected map below is feeling too difficult or frustrating to defend on map is great again the community doesn't understand that the complicated maps with more entrances to sites require more patience and typically that results in overpeaks that you can't really fix with any map design choices no clue what to do here if you have any final comments to write on maps and Valorant, please write them in the section below um map feels fine but there are still issues with the b-side design as it's very mo monotonous oh my god how do you write this in polish it's just monotone like this that will be fixed now how do you write this in english monothematic to attack oh you guys helped me okay mo monotone okay monotone to attack the site almost every time you are doing the same decisions a has a site wait a site has similar issues but they are enforced because of the fast contact on belt which motivates players to insta peak without conducing any plan before that again becomes monotonous Thanks for taking the survey. Your feedback is incredibly valuable for helping us to continue to improve Valorant. To close out the survey, please give us any other feedback you have about Valorant. Please consider giving out Radianite in the bundles that you buy in this shop. Radianite is incredibly expensive and punishes players 
for buying too many skins. Seems weird. All right. We thank you for your time spent taking this survey. Your response has been recorded. Thank you for watching, guys. Leave a comment of what you would change or what you would write in this survey below the movie.